it's a Sunday afternoon. The skies are clear and I'm going out for a photo shoot and with the dudes. Hello, Bren. What's going on here? I am um, just having a laugh. No tourists. Yep, yep, yep. No tourists, please. Bryn Parrot Photography. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, buongiorno. Buongiorno. So we're meeting Marcin up there. Oh, is he already there? I don't know. Okay. Let's just have, let's just go and see. He's alive! Yay! <laughs> I'd hug him, but I don't want his corona. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Keeping your distance. Vlogging? Keeping your distance. Keeping your distance. He's always That's vlogging good. now. This is life. He's crazy now. Any word that comes out of his mouth is recorded. I have to watch what I'm saying now. Yeah. <laughs> Certain words you mustn't say. Marcin Kowalski. Yep, the legend. And Mr. Parrot. The semi legend. The semi legend. Most people just call me semi. Out and about. <laughs> Welcome to the Dead Man's Island. I've been here before. I have a couple of images. You can see it here and uh, there. And uh, this, that's from um, April, I think. So I'm back here to do astrophotography and the Milky Way is going to rise approximately right here somewhere, south, southwest. And it's going to be pretty awesome. And um, the best thing about this trip is that I'm out with my buddies, Mosin and Bryn, and we're awaiting the almighty loss. So I'm going to ask my buddies today how they approach astrophotography. Um, I'm pretty curious about that. I think it might be a bit similar to me, but I'm, I'm going to be curious. And I'm going to ask them about com composites as well. If they do them, why? And why not if they don't? So uh, stay tuned and follow along. Can you find anything? I don't know, I'm just trying to see. This time of year, this is almost west, isn't it, where we're set in? So if South, south, west. So, so what you want to do now is to find some sort of leading line towards the Milky Way? Yeah, I'm just looking for anything that could be of interest. Some of it will be maybe grand, some of it may be very discreet. So what are you looking at here? I'm just looking at this big fat crack that works its way through the rock. X marks, marks the start. X marks the start, yeah. Could be something, could be nothing. You've just got to look at it all as you go around and then come and visit again in blue hour. So you... Uh, see if the light is right, if the angle's right. But let me ask you, uh, let's do it this way. So, so let me ask you, Brent, when you're out shooting, do, do, you, do you shoot, you said blue hour, do you shoot the foreground at blue hour? A lot of the time, yeah. I have, that's what I've started to do now. Before, when I first started astrophotography, I was you know, I'd just turn up in the night and just leave it for like a four, five, ten minute exposure for the foreground. All right. But it was always hit and miss and uh, you know, when it's a single shot, then it's quite grainy as well. So now I uh, start more in blue hour, come here to this sort of time, have a good look around, then revisit all the locations I've what, thought of. What are the advantages of shooting in the foreground at blue hour? Ah, uh, you've got a lovely light, which you can match quite nicely later on. Uh, you have no shadows whatsoever. It's just one flat, even surface, but you can get pretty quick exposures and uh, are still at a very low ISO so there's no, ah, uh, no so less noise less noise less noise that's awesome so it's a okay it's a, it's a it's a top tip I would say for Astro I'm looking forward to see your crack I got a lot of crack I got a lot of crack all right Mussin, Mussin, come here. Yes. 
Do you find anything? Uh, it's just scouting, looking for something interesting in the frame. So w when you come out here, what do you look for? Well, something to catch my eye, some interesting pattern, the waves movement, how waves crash on the rocks and create some action. So do you like to include the waves when you shoot astrophotography? Yep. You should see some of his work. It's it's pretty 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 good, pretty good. If if he allows me, I can show you right here. Look here. One, two, three, boom, and boom, and boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty good, Marcin. Yes, right? thanks, thanks. It's been a while since you were out now, hasn't it? Yep. Yeah. Very quiet it, year for me. Yep. That's that. I think 2020 has been weird for a lot of people. Yep. Yeah. So um, it's good to be out with you again. Yeah. Great. I'm looking forward to see what you come up with. And do you also shoot at Blue Hour, your, your, your foregrounds? Yes, very often. Why? Because you catch more light and then you don't have to use very high ISO later. So then, so then you... Cl cleaner picture. Cleaner picture. So then you, you, you blend the Blue Hour shot with the Milky Way shot at night? Yes. Huh. Do you track your, your Milky yep. Ways? Okay, good. I track them. Good. So talk, talk us through the composition we, we, we're discussing here. I'll let Marcin talk you through. No, 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 He's Bryn is going. Come on, Bryn. Oh, well, as you can see here, let me sort of get out of the way. A beautiful little uh, valley, I suppose it is, uh, facing the right way. Well, lots uh, of lots small of, po lots uh, of small ponds small as well. Ponds, yeah, which uh, once the sea breeze dies down, should be beautiful uh, reflective pools. And the killer bit here is this beautiful white rock, this beautiful quartz. What, is, just what are you talking straight about? Straight through here. Can you see it down there? There's just white. There. Like white. This beautiful right white here? rock, yeah. That's going to be a lovely thing to sort of enhance the leading line. Right. Uh, and the Milky Way is going to come. Well, I've had it on good advice from uh, my uh, pal Frank Otto. Right. That uh, Milky Way is coming up this way somewhere. Yep. I haven't looked on the apps yet, so uh, we shall see. Great. Fancy this astro stuff, yeah, don't we? It. But what is it that makes it so so much fun? I think it's because it's harder than most other photography, so it's a bit of a challenge. Plus, you're out when nobody else really else is. It's so peaceful. It's so tranquil. And for me, I've always loved astronomy. So I've loved it since I was a kid. I've always, always had a passion for it. So just being out, just looking at the stars. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. I think we, we, we can capture something what people, normal people, don't see and don't realize then it's here. Because people normally think then the Milky Way or stars or something. It's just somewhere far away, fancy, you know, locations or something. Yeah. But we are just how many kilometers from the centrum and actually if you want you can see the Milky Way very clearly yeah. Yeah, and, and, and also because all of that it's the shooting of Milky Way is really fun mm. because you have to think about these locations you have to plan you know okay in this part of the year the Milky Way will be there it will fit in this kind of composition or yeah. not then you have to wait maybe six months <laughs> to, to you know you have your image in the no but that's true I, I, I did that a few times you know well you do just, prepare just, for years just, for this don't yeah, you yeah, yeah. Just, you so, know. So may ju I just ask, so uh, that tells me that you don't do composites or composites? Well, sometimes I do. I have, not, I have nothing against composites. So... But why, why wait then? Why don't you just shoot the foreground and then blend in the Milky Way? It's not, for, it's not so fulfilling, you know? Ah. It's not so it's much not fun. It's not either, is it, in, a, in one it's, way? It's not... It's not then it's a cheating or something, you know, it's it. I, I believe there is a place for everyone and for everything in the Internet. If someone just want to composite, you know, Milky Way, that's fine. It's art but then, yeah. No, it, yeah, it's art. But so if, if someone lies about this, you know, just he's saying, OK, I will just taking this and not stating then this is, you know, the, the shot from the total totally different place or mm -hmm. time of the year, then it's not fine. But if I'm saying, you know, this is my version or my, you know, composition for this kind of shot, I don't see anything wrong with that. No. Majority of my images now, 
now that I've advanced more in uh, astrophotography are composites. Be uh, before everything was one shot because I didn't know yeah. how to use the equipment otherwise, and so I would just go find my uh, composition, and that's where I was like saying <coughs> earlier, you know, a lot of my uh, foregrounds would have been three, four minutes. Yeah, but this, this is a good segue to ask you, Mazin. What is what is your your approach when you do astrophotography? Well, we shoot during the blue hour because we want to have the maximum quality, maximum possible quality of the picture that we can capture. If it's night, then there is no light. There is only light pollution, light or starlight. So we have to bump the the, the ISO and exposure time, and then all this brings a lot of technical issues. So the, the, the picture quality will be much worse mm. than, for example, if we take during blue hour, the same shot and the blend Milky Way from later. So I do this because I want to have better picture quality. All right. Not because it's easier, it's actually much more difficult, <laughs> <laughs> much more difficult. It's, difficult. it's much easier to just shoot one, you know, all in yeah. one uh, shot and one ready. 20, one yeah. 20 second exposure. Just night. bump oh. ISO to 6000 or something and just take 30 second exposure and ready. Mm. But you don't get the same quality, clear, you know, details in the shadows yeah, as soon and as you no come noise and everything. Social media sized images, then yeah. you, you're done. Right. Yeah. Is, it, is this the same way you do it? This is the way I've moved on to, yeah, because I was before just one shot. One, the one shot wonder boy. <laughs> the, one, well, the single exposure bring. Single exposure, yeah, that was it. I would come down in the middle of the night. That's where we all started, wasn't well, it? We all yeah, because yeah, it's, the, it's the way to start, because you've got to learn the mistakes and then, and then to, we... <coughs> to advance, because if you don't know the mistakes and how to correct them, you won't advance. So exactly. it's, a good, it's a good starting point. It yeah. is. But guys... As you can see as well, it's getting dark. I'm not sure actually can you, you can see, see, us, see us right now because <laughs> blue hour is upon us and we have to get ready to uh, do some photography. Yeah. Don't we, guys? We have to shoot our Maybe. foregrounds. Yeah, I think we have shoot to. Shoot our foregrounds. I've got shoot one juicy one ready in my mind. So I'm going to switch this camera off and we're about to go. i got to take off my foot. <laughs> Don't kill yourself. There's the blue for real. <laughs> Lars is doing his thing. He just found this really, really nice leading line going straight towards the Milky Way. I have finished my foreground exposures and I'm just waiting for the Milky Way to burst out in all its glory. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up my tracker and I'm going to expose for the sky after that. So um, I'm pretty happy about this. I think the, the guys have found something interesting as well so um, let's just see how it turns out so um let me introduce to you this this dude right here the a bit late <laughs> the the oldie in the group yeah, the old, old fart uh, uh, we found out that uh, Mars is really, really close these days and uh, it's not going to be as close, is it 15 years? Another 15 years, yeah. And we, we made a quick count and we found out that Lars would be 90. <laughs> so, uh, no, so way. no way! No <laughs> way! <laughs> but I just, I, we, we just have to wrap this, uh, this, uh, this video up. Uh, so i just wondering, are you happy with your results? Bryn? Yeah, I think so, considering uh, everything. Yeah, I'm quite happy for today. So w what kind of s foregrounds did you get? I actually mainly focused on that um, quartz uh, section in the rock down there. So uh, I was following that for a bit. So it's kind of like a, a white a white foreground right, leading right. out to the Milky Way. I but, gave up on that one. Yeah, but it was a bit hard today, actually, with... Um, uh, the sunset actually lingering for so long and the shadow in that valley so you had one side was real dark shadow the water pools were still reflecting a lot of light from the um, sunset and it, well you've been it, talking for too yeah. long Marcin what do you what do you uh, what do you <laughs> what do you <laughs> what do you think are you happy with yours yeah with Milky Way shot yes foreground we will see I have some wave action and I have some experiment with light painting and yeah, we'll see. 
We call him the wave master. Every time we do <laughs> photography, he almost ends up in the wave. Almost? But he, but he conquers them. I'm dry today, so it's You're a dry surprise. Today. It is a surprise. <laughs> it's a first in a long time. What about you, Lars? You came a bit late, so, so you, you didn't manage to check out the island before you came? Nah, I got nothing. You got nothing? <laughs> nah. At least you got a tracked night yeah. image. So uh, you can yeah. use that for something else then, yeah. maybe, if you uh, like composites. And I got some fresh air. This was a lot of fun. We had some nice conversations and I actually I think I learned a trick or two today. No, I didn't. No. I, didn't. <laughs> Did I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I'm just, I'm just messing about. <laughs> but that's a wrap. We had a great time. It's time to pack our things and head back because it's 9 a.m. No, it's not. It's 9 p.m. And that's when Lars has to go to bed. Yeah. So bye for now. Over and out. <laughs> <laughs>